as you mentioned, it has to be so big that it's really hard to um, to manually check all of the data. It's impossible, and so you never know um, what the training data actually is, and also how the model will combine the different uh, inputs it got from the training. So, and I think that's yeah the, un the inherent unpredictableness of the um, of these models uh, is what generates this uh, ethical issue. So we've talked a little bit about the models and, and uh, the training data, but I realized that maybe not everyone in the audience is familiar with how these technologies work. Maybe you can shortly summarize a little bit about um, how, you know, how training data is, uh, um, is used, what you should observe when you are generating training data, because I think this is a big uh, topic, actually. Um, uh, so. Maybe you can illustrate a little bit around that. Any one of you who would like to join? Uh, I can start, yeah. So basically, when you talk about um, these models and training, then uh, there's, of course, different ways to do that. And um, maybe some of you are really familiar with it, so, but I start in a very general way. You have, imagine a table, uh, where you have characteristics of uh, people. Um, I don't know, you have uh, things like age, gender, uh, other characteristics, and then you have some another uh, column in the in the data where some behavior is recorded. And uh, for example, if this person buys a product, yes or no. And this is the so-called label. So, and what what you want is to to first have a complete data set uh, of all uh, let's say maybe customers or uh, people who bought the product or not, and then you want to uh, use some, maybe even not so uh, rocket science uh, methods from statistics to understand how the characteristics of uh, the customers are predicting the decision to buy or not to buy. And once you have that, once you have these parameters set that predict, that can predict or can explain this behavior, you can actually predict from new customers where you don't know yet if they will buy or not buy, a certain chance or probability whether they become a customer or not. So this is, would be a very simple yeah. example of training. It sounds very straightforward and quite easy actually. So how would bias come into that? So Anton, maybe you can illustrate, because it's just mathematics. I mean, people yeah. bought something and then I have a probability that someone else will buy something. So it's, it's only based on probability. Um, machine learning as a whole is just a new fancy word for statistics. Um, and as Christian mentioned, for example, in this characteristica, if we have, for example, um, just one white person in it and that white person um, every time buys an apple, then you would assume that another white person also buys an apple. Mm -hmm. So it's very important with a lot of data, but also good data. Yeah, that's a good point that you made and you mentioned that maybe there's just one white person in the sample and what we're seeing in the algorithms is that a lot of those algorithms just contain data that is either male or it's from a certain, um, well, usually white population, white male population. And